Today, we are going to deal with lead poisoning and Ayurvedic medicines. In this video, we are going to look into the what are the Ayurvedic medicines which are having lead in it and what are signs and symptoms, presentation, diagnosis and treatment for lead poisoning. The US Food and Drug Administration that is FDA recommended limit of daily intake of lead from all the sources is 3 mcg per day for children and 12 mcg per day for adult. At lower level, a person with a lead poisoning may be asymptomatic. However, long term lead exposure above 5 to 10 micrograms per dl increase the risk for health effect. Nilanjana that is PBS and Naga that is PB are the main source of lead in Ayurvedic medicines. List of few Ayurvedic drugs having lead in their preparation. Vangadi Yoga Maha Yoga Raja Gugulu, Yogeshwara Rasa, Ekanga Veera Rasa, Yoga Raja Gugulu, Vasanta Kusumakara Rasa, Chandra Prabhavati, these are the few of commonly used medicines in Ayurvedic practice which are having led with them. Approximately nearly about 40 to 44 drugs are there which are having the lead in their preparation. If you wanted to have a look on that, the link is given in the description. You can go through that. Coming into the types of lead poisoning. Acute and chronic based on the duration. These are the two variants of lead poisoning. Sometimes Medications may cause acute lead poisoning and sometimes if it is the dosage is very less and duration is more then it may cause the chronic lead poisoning. And apart from the medication, so rest of the causes are occupational. So like battery manufacturing, people's automobile radiator repair, tiles workers like in ceramics, lead mining and construction works. In, for example, pipe, plastic pipe workers, so they are prone for lead poisoning. Coming to the chronic lead poisoning, so some of the medications as I told earlier and here, so for the chronic lead poisoning, so in the most of the causes are environmental related like paint, so paint like, like decorative paints which are having lead in it and Leaded gasoline nowadays is banned, so it's a fuel for the vehicles. So these are the two things which is which are spilling the lead into the environment. Coming to the pathophysiology, so if it is due to the medicine or the occupation or else the <coughs> because of the environment, whatever the cause may be, which will leads into ALA. So ALA and ferrochelate, these are the two enzymes which are required for the production of hemoglobin. So alteration of the function of ALA and ferrochelate will cause a decreased production of the red blood cells which leads into the anemia. Coming to the clinical presentation. So lead toxicity, it may affect the hematological functions or else GIT functions, CNS functions, renal functions. Coming into the one by one, hematological effect, microcytic anemia is seen in lead poisoning, normal iron studies because in case of iron deficiency, microcytic anemia is seen. If the anemia is microcytic anemia and the iron levels are normal, then it will be, it may be due to the lead poisoning.
fatigue, pallor, shortness of breath, these are the features of the anemia. So heme production, decrease in the heme production is the cardinal sign of the lead poisoning. Coming to the GIT effects. Abdominal pain because it alters the motility, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and constipations are the presentations of lead poisoning. We can we may see the diarrhea or some sometimes we may see the constipation also. Neurological effects irritability decreased concentration is mostly seen on the pediatric patients and encephalopathy wrist drop or foot drops. So these are the neurological presentations of lead poisoning. Lead lines, that is, we call it as Burton's line here. You can see these are nothing but the Burton's lines. So, which is a presentation that is bluish brown discoloration of the gingiva. So, this is the Burton's line. Burton's lines are seen in the lead poisoning and the lead this is these are called lead lines lead lines so lead lines in the epiphyseal of the long bones it may be seen on the long bones so this is also a cardinal feature of the lead poisoning coming to the renal effect decreased urine output Fanconi syndrome that is uh, nothing but the phosphatidia glycosuria, amino aciduria. So these are the presentations of if the renal system is involved in the lead poisoning or lead toxicity. And lead nephropathy may be the resultant of that. Apart from this, sometimes we may see the cardiovascular effect also like hypertension and risk of cardiac stroke. So for the better remembrance, the signs and symptoms of the lead poisoning can be remembered as in the mnemonic lead, L-E-A-D. L for lead lines on the gingiva and the long bone epiphysis. E for encephalopathy. A for abdominal pain and anemia. D for drop of the foot and wrist. Coming into the diagnosis, whole blood lead level that is BLL. If it is exceeding more than 12 mcg per dl, we can say it is uh, uh, lead poisoning. Free erythrocyte protoporphyrin, that is FEP, is increased in these cases. CBC shows microcytic anemia with normal ferritin level, that is normal iron level, long bone lead lines are seen on the long bone x-rays. So with the help of these investigations, we can diagnose the lead poisoning. Coming into the treatment part, so chelation therapy is initiated if the lead poisoning is exceeding more than 70 mcg per dl. DMSA, that is dimercaprol, that is British anti Lamuase. So, ball. If it, this has to be, this is said to be a very good chelation therapy if it is exceeding more than 70 mcg per dl. That is severe lead poisoning. EDTA is useful if the lead poisoning is less than 40, and the dosage is 100 mg per meter uh, square meter of the body surface. Gastric leverage can be administered. Seximer and penicillamine, these are the orally administrable drugs for the chelation therapy. So this, these two are used when the lead poisoning exceeding more than 70 mcg per dl. That is, seximer is nothing but the derivative of dimercaprol. So dosage of the saximer is 10 mg per kg every 8 hourly 
penicillamine dosage is 15 mg per kg per day for 4 to 12 weeks. Here, DMSA and succimer penicillamines, these are used for the severe lead poisoning, whereas EDTA is used for the moderate lead poisoning as a chelation therapy. Among these, DMSA and EDTA are parentally usable, whereas succimer and penicillamine are meant for the oral use administration. Dear friends, so this is about the short video regarding the lead poisoning. If you like this video, then kindly subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon and forward to the native people. Thank you. Thanks for watching my video.